Welcome back to Real Talk. Today we have the talented Epic Kizan on the show. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank well, you for um, inviting back. me. Welcome back. Welcome back. That's a good intro. Talented. <laughs> I know what you are. You're you are so, more than talented. You are Thank so you. talented. I mean, in, in everything. Would you say you have a favorite uh, genre, a favorite? Uh, do you like comedy? Do you like uh, drama? Do you like all the hostage takings and raping? <laughs> I like the offbeat. I like the offbeat okay. roles. And you're good at offbeat I, characters. I just enjoy doing um, the offbeat roles probably because it's something that I am not. So th thus pushing my, my acting, um, um, cap on. you know, acting uh, capabilities oh, further. Hold, hold on. You're saying you are not you are offbeat. You are not offbeat. I, I mean... In real life? Yeah. Well, I'm what an did angel you say? in real life. No. <laughs> You are so off me. Really? In a good way. In a good way. No, it's, in a it's, good it's way. Because I, mean, I was limping. Or yes, <laughs> you're limp. No. But, but yeah, I mean, you don't you don't come across as, as the you know the, the quiet type. You mean no, personality? I mean, personality. Wise, you were not off me. I or? can in real life. I may I may be off beat once in a while. Once in a while, I may I may, but. Um, most often than not, You're especially I, when I'm with my family, I'm, yeah. I'm, <laughs> especially when I'm with my wife then, yes. then and my really daughter, then I am the most angelic You're person like a around. Well, well, you are. Now you're part of the award-winning film, Unlucky Plaza. Can you please tell us about that? For those who have not been in Singapore, uh, there's a mall called Lucky yes. Plaza. Yes. She knows it. I used to live there. She used to live so, in the plaza. No. Okay. <laughs> in Singapore, and yeah, Lucky okay. Plaza is Filipino Central. Yeah, so. Exactly. That's yes. where you Filipinos. find all the Filipino stores, Filipino restaurants, and it is where every Filipino converge every yes. Sunday. Every so Sunday. It's just, you know, a Filipino center. And um, my character, Onassis Hernandez, is, is, is actually a, a, a restaurant owner. Mm -hmm. Mm, who happens to run this uh, this this what do you call this this restaurant that has been you know uh, passed on from generation mm -hmm. to generation and you know apparently this restaurant is actually you know on the slumps okay. because of a, of a food poisoning incident mm -hmm. and um, it, and then um. It's still, it's was, still very basic. Uh, nothing offbeat yet. Nothing offbeat no, yet. Nothing, nothing offbeat. Yeah, it's very until, simple. Until I was scammed by just uh, a few Singaporeans out of my last few money mm -hmm. to fend for my family. So I was actually basically fending so for my, were, my son. Mm -hmm. um, I was really pushed to the corner and I, was, I had to fend for my, my son. How much of yourself did you bring into the film? How much of myself? How well, much of your I brought. Take <laughs> our, our, I brought myself as a father. Oh. That 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 I know. I I I. I brought with me, the father in me. You know. So what would an epikizon do if you know I was in that situation? In that situation, so, pushed to the corner and had to, and had to defend my family or defend my kid. You went in raw. I mean, not having, um, being told. I want you to act this way. You act and ask Epi Kiso. Um, the funny thing is, uh, after reading the script, I call my director saying, can I put your script aside? And you know, this is a script this much and about 80% is mine, is my lines, mm -hmm. right? So they're like, can I put the script aside? And he goes, and, and the director goes, you can, but you have to read with my, with, mm -hmm. with your, with, your, with the Singaporean actors first, because they have a different process. No? So we did read, I did read with them, but um, basically really put the, the script aside and then, you know, I, I went for truth. We, we both went for truth. And the good thing is uh, he, he my, my director understood my process and I think he, he adjusted to that process. I don't know if he adjusted to, uh, I don't know how much he adjusted to, to me, but um, we saw eye to eye on how to, to get to that process, you mm -hmm. know, and um, we limited our our, our um, takes into three takes at least. Wow. So and that how did the other actors adjust to your well, improvisation? I mean, the other actors in the, the script are phenomenal actors mm -hmm. as well. They're like, they, these, these people are like big stars in Singapore. Like um, Adrian Pang is like the, uh, probably the Robert De Niro yeah, yeah, of Singapore. Yeah. Gu Liang is, uh, is, is one of the biggest, you know, uh, 
TV stars for the, the Chinese um, mm -hmm. the Chinese network, the Chinese um, channels. Um, Pam is the best actress for theater, and you know, I mean, big stars in in Singapore. Judy, Judy was actually Judy Tan was a, it's like a, a big, you know, those just those um, those traditional Chinese theater. Yes, Actresses, she's yes, big in that. So. Yes, yes. And you're also a big star here in the Philippines. No, I know. <laughs> also, Actually, not a big star. star. They, they always say, you're the famous one. No, I'm the infamous one. <laughs> but not offbeat. <laughs> not, not offbeat, but what was it like working with uh, Singaporean cast and crew? Well, um, it's actually just, uh, it's basically the same. I same mean, they're, 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 they I mean, are as professional as they can be. You know, um, uh, the only difference is actually in Singap the, the Singaporean production to the Filipino production is we they did follow the twelve-hour working day, <laughs> which we are fighting for still. Yes, so yes. you know, no, no one was no one was grumpy on the set. You know, everyone had a, you know were 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 on their were on the top of the game. Mm -hmm. They were. Um, uh, there, there were 101 percent um, present yeah. and um, doing the job and you know fu fully charged, not like like that, not like you know here in the Philippines when, we, when, you, when, you, when you when you work 18 hours, 20 hours a day and then There's you go no more to the second the set the next day you're like drained out That's from right. from life right That's from right. life itself. So, but if if you you mentioned earlier that you put the script aside. So did you have you didn't do any preparations or did you still need to? Oh, you you have to you have what to sort on the of day preparations? itself. But I wouldn't I wouldn't um, overdo it. I would I didn't overdo the preparation because um, <laughs> unlike <laughs> other prepara uh, unlike other films, I had to prepare for. I had to you know like really master and hit my marks and all that. But this. I wanted to come. I wanted to come as natural as possible. So, <laughs> I did. I did get my lines right, mm -hmm. but emotionally, I did not prepare myself on how to do it or okay, how to you say just kinda, it. How to, you just went in I, and I I went know, whatever in comes as out. Raw as, that's raw. As, as I could. could, but of course, hitting my marks so that my, my I wouldn't throw the co my co actors mm -hmm. off of off. Mm -hmm. off um, of beat, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but um, I came in, I came in as raw as possible. Yeah. I guess that's how, that's how the, 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 the how, how wide the character, as it is, worked, no? Mm -hmm. I mean, the good thing about it is I had a director who controlled the levels. Yes. My yes. levels of the anger, because I was, you know, mostly angry at them. It, but, but it's a dark comedy, so what is a dark comedy? How could a, a comedy be funny and then dark? I wouldn't call it as a dark, as a, as dark comedy or, or as black humor, I, I would call it as real as life. A nail, I mean, as, as a nail biting comedy, okay. because you're on the edge of your seat and what's the going whole. to happen. Uh, so you're at the, you're at the end of, edge of the seat while you're 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 actually laughing. I, I, I you would see yourself laughing, and, you know. What what would you say would be the hardest or the most challenging part of of this film that you had to hmm. do? The hardest would be the, the the me realizing that I was being scammed. Mm -hmm. So from the from the, the 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 normal Onassis who was trying to be, you know, positive in life, sees finds himself finds himself you know uh, cornered. And this is when I was slowly sinking in that I was being scammed. That I was being. You know that I was scammed in the last few cents that I have. That's the uh, that to convince myself of that reality in in the film was probably the the the, the, the hardest, no? the, the 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 most challenging mm -hmm. part of the, the yeah. role. And it paid off because you won Best Actor in the Manhattan International yeah. Film yeah. Festival. Well. Well. International, <laughs> <laughs> talaga, sorry. Ah. <laughs> How well, did you how did you feel? Well, that was a um, well for me an award is just an award. An award is a is like a, a cherry on top of the, mm. the ice cream, right? So um, the best award that I can I can that I do get is when people see the film and then they say, "Hey, I saw how you you know you and you did a good job." 
And for me, that's the best award. It's you know, for, for people to appreciate. Of course, give being, being that as the uh, premise of me being proud, they gave me an award. So uh, I guess I'm just a bit prouder than, mm -hmm. because they gave me that trophy. It's more heartfelt. Yeah. And that's more heartfelt. And it's, you know, it's, an, it's an international award. You know, I've, it's just really... Um, hey, you're, you're Epic Eason. <laughs> what what can you know, say? I mean, I wanna, awards awards I just come wanna, so easy for you. I don't want my <laughs> ego to... Um, to to swell. To go to, to swell. swell, but it did kind of swell a bit. Uh, when, I, <laughs> when I did well, get well, the I award. I should hope so. You should pat yourself be, in the back. I am not going to be a hypocrite by saying I didn't go, hey, good, good job. job. Good, good job. Good job. Good job. So, well, well, thank you so much, Epi, for, for being with us. But don't go away. We'll have you back again later. For now, we have to pause for a short break. But again, we'd like to invite our viewers to please send in their thoughts on Facebook or tweet us at CNNPH Lifestyle. And don't forget to use the hashtag, hashtag CNNPH Real Talk. We will see you in a bit. Welcome back to Real Talk. Now we are joined by award-winning director from Singapore, Ken Quack. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me on the show. And, and welcome to the Philippines. Yeah, I'm loving it here. Are you? Thanks so for what, what's, me. A, what's a one thing that you like most about the Philippines? Food. <laughs> okay, what's your favorite food? Well, uh, Epi has been taking me around, you know, I, I like the late night suppers, bulalo. Oh no. Uh, I love breakfast with tuyo. And, yes, uh, you're a Filipino already. <laughs> yeah, with, the, with an egg on top, you know, and I've had quack quack. With, and you know, my name is <laughs> Ken Quack, so it, oh. I feel like I'm cannibalizing myself <laughs> when I eat quack quack, but there you go. Well, it's nice to have you here. But before we talk about the Unlucky Plaza, prior to making films, you were a political journalist. Yes, I was. So how did that transition happen? Well, I came back to Singapore after spending about six years in the UK. I came back to Singapore and took a job as a journalist. Uh, and I, you know, I love journalism. Journalism allowed me to access places and talk to people mm -hmm. that I ordinarily might not get yeah. to speak to. Uh, I think that really was a big part of it, getting to meet people who are you know, underprivileged or you know, communities mm -hmm. that are impoverished or marginalized, including uh, OFWs and yes. Filipino OFWs yes, yes. in Singapore. And that kind of really made me, I, I loved it. You know, mm -hmm. I loved being in that world, but as you know, uh, Singapore is not the most uh, open society in the That's world. Right. We've got a lot of censorship. Mm -hmm. uh, the state more or less controls all the media. So there was some frustration okay. for me. There was a, a control on what I could write and what I couldn't write. So I got frustrated and after three years, I decided, look, uh, if you want to uh, be a journalist, you need to work in an environment that allows you to chase stories with with the integrity and the honesty that good journalism demands. Mm, that's right. And if you can't do that, then, you know... Then what do you do? Turn to fiction. <laughs> fiction! <laughs> but even with fiction, there's still a sense of censorship. Well, that's what I learned. That's so, what you learned. Because I, uh, I, I moved into making movies because I thought that you know, if, you, if fiction is fiction, you know, it, it's, harder, made up, right? it's harder for people to clamp down on you. But when I released my first uh, series of short films, uh, I, I got banned in Singapore and that kind of uh, really made me realize that, well, even in fiction, there are challenges. So, yeah. And it was banned also in Malaysia. I yes, think. that's right. Not mistaken. Pointed. How did this affect you as an artist? It's <sighs> a good question. I read it, no, uh, they requested for so many cuts. Yes. And then, as an artist, I'm sure your sense of creativity was curtailed. Yes. How did you feel about that? You know, I was very angry and very disappointed at first. And as you know, these cuts also come with a cost. You know, you have to go back into the editing suite, you have to reprint the film. So not only is it an artistic infringement, it's also a commercial problem. And you kind of start to feel that you can't really flourish. Mm -hmm. So. For a while, I think I got my head down and I decided, what, what am I going to do? And then I realized that, you know, you, you can't let 
what other people think mm -hmm. and what other people want to impose on you change the way you want to tell your stories. Mm -hmm. So frankly, the way to deal with it is not to care. Mm -hmm. To say, you know what? They can impose the rules on you know on 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 you commercially they can try and do everything to trap you but then if you're not free up here then you've really lost mm -hmm. so i think it's so it's this, this did it yeah. stop your creative flourishing and... yeah because it seems like you seem to be a guy <laughs> that, that has a story to tell whether it started in your journalism and and your your um you're using your your films yeah. to still convey the story that you learned as a journalist and what you actually want to I see. I think one of the things that's kept me really going is is the fact that I love comedies. You love comedies? I love comedies. I mean, you can call it, you know, black comedy or, you know, dark humor. But it, it I think, makes, it allows an artist to tackle difficult issues, tough issues, and still engage people. Because if it's not, like, too heavy, if you can still laugh about it, then, you know, people are susceptible to, to tackling difficult issues. So I think writing scripts and making movies that continue to uh, tackle weighty issues, but having, at the end of the day, the idea that you've got to make people laugh and you've got to entertain them, that's really... Uh, what's kept me going too, and like I, God knows, I've had to make myself laugh you know, <laughs> in the in the environment that I come from back I home. Yeah. So, are you a funny guy? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> like they say of most comedians, like we're kind of like sad clowns. <laughs> You know, we. Uh, you yeah. always have a serious side, right? You always yeah. have that serious side. So how how did Epi come into the picture? And I got to know Epi. You know, we we hit it off as friends. You know, he has the same sense of humor, mm -hmm. the same sense of curiosity about the world. Despite his protestations, he mm -hmm. is offbeat, <laughs> and we like offbeat. So uh, when we when I came here, uh, we really hit it off, and we started talking, and. Also, I mean, come on, this guy is from a, a grand tradition exactly. of comedy. I know he can do comedy too, right? Mm -hmm. But I was looking for a, an actor who could do... Uh, well, let me rewind a little bit. I got to see the serious side of Epic Zone. You know, I learned... To, you know, we, we became confidants. We, we, we talked a lot. Uh, late nights together, drinking and, and sharing stories. And I've seen where earlier in his life he might have anger and violence that that stuff uh, which cuts deep huh? but when we so when i got back to singapore i thought there's something i need to do with this guy uh and it's like throw the other project aside oh for a bit. so you threw it aside threw it aside for a bit and say, look, I want to work with this guy. And I did have this so, other script. Mm -hmm. I did have this other story that I was already, it wasn't quite developed. And but you had no person in mind yet. No, but after spending that, uh, I think a week or two weeks and like a lot of time <laughs> with <laughs> Mr. Kizon. You he brainwashed you. He brainwashed me, <laughs> yeah. You found your Onassis. By the way, I love the name. I know. Because yeah. that's very Filipino to have a name. I, like. Onassis. Yes, that, Onassis. I, I must come clean that the name is the name of uh, my physiotherapist when I had a hand injury. <laughs> But he's a Filipino OFW living okay. in Singapore. It was a lovely that guy. That explains and, it. And I, I'm sure so Epi's I, dad probably played an Onassis <laughs> somewhere in his, in his career, probably, right? It, yeah. It's a very How Filipino. far back do we trace your Filipino connection? I mean, obviously you wanted to cast actors in the Philippines. What was your like first encounter with Filipinos or the Philippines? Well, I mean, there are quarter million Filipinos yes. in Singapore. So I have grown up with Filipinos mm -hmm. around me all my life. Or even with Lucky Plaza. But yeah, exactly. But in terms of making friends and becoming closer and then understanding the culture on a deeper level, uh, maybe really in the last three, four years, mm -hmm. um, it was because my wife Pam was involved with in Rent years mm. ago. She's a theatre actress. She's Which also got a, a lot role of Filipino the actors. And there were a lot of Filipino actors. Mm. So we all kind of became friends. Mm. And then a few years ago, I came to watch God of Carnage, mm -hmm. which was a Singapore-Philippines theatre co-production. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
through my friend Adrian Pang, who was in it, got to know more mm -hmm. uh, Filipino yeah. friends. So, you know, it's been a gradual um, but very steady increase of my circle of, of friends and loved Pretty ones Pretty soon you're going to end up moving <laughs> in the Philippines, yeah. you know, Epi's going to keep you here, you're going to do... Uh, I wouldn't rule it out. <laughs> yeah, oh no, there's something that makes it. So tell us about um, your first film, because you, you, you were a political journalist, a screenwriter, assistant director. So my short first, film. my short film was called Sex, Violence, Family Values. It was a trilogy of short films uh, that looked at the underbelly of Singapore, if you will. You know, Singapore has this uh, image of being this perfect, crime-free, really orderly, really disciplined society. And whilst that is true, that's, as in any society, only half the picture. The other picture is that you know, it's inhabited by human beings who have the same foibles and human flaws as anybody mm -hmm. else. They can be greedy, they can be racist, they can be funny, they can be all these things. Mm -hmm. So that short film was meant to depict the real Singapore that I know. Uh, but of course, that also means showing some of the, the, the dark side or the unsavory yeah. side of the Singaporean mm -hmm. mind or the prejudices that we face in society and so I think uh, some of the public as well as the authorities were a little bit uncomfortable with that and so the film eventually got banned and it, we, my producers and I had to mount uh, a legal, def, you know, a legal mm -hmm. an appeal mm -hmm. and a legal defense and we did eventually persuade the censors to pass the film because it was a satire. Yes. It wasn't meant it to wasn't offend meant people. To offend. That's right. it, it was meant to highlight, I think, uh, an issue in a funny way so that we can recognize That's it right. and, right. and hopefully. And, and just deal with it, right? Deal and with you it. Don't hide it. Absolutely. You just gotta actually just go for it. But anyway, more on Unlucky Plaza when we return. But for now, we'll have to pause for a short break. Welcome back to Real Talk. Again, we have Epi Kizun and Ken Quack with us on the show today. Now, before we get to see what our viewers have to say, we'd like to ask both of you, since both of you are award-winning, was there ever a time when you were not at your best, okay? And how did you overcome that? Who? Me? Well, I always find myself not at my best. No? <laughs> <laughs> Like when I said, I'm, I'm offbeat. So. Yeah. See, now you admit it. Now you're offbeat. Now, now you're offbeat. Okay. It's all coming That's off. why I have to like really, really, you know, I, hmm. I, I have to get, I have to focus on something. But once I really want to get what I want, I, I hit my mark. And is that something that you learn from your father or is it just your own? Well, it's a family thing, yes. And how about you, Ken? You know, I think that I, artists are their own harshest critics and sometimes you have to cut yourself a bit of slack. Having said that, I think that I am at my worst, like a lot of people, when I'm tired. Mm -hmm. And that's why I would lobby for the Philippines to adopt <laughs> the 12 hours okay. for its cast and its crew, because uh, when, you're, when you have an artist that's rested uh, and a crew that's rested, then they will come in and give you 110 percent but as epi said i i think the way we work is i i believe in a lot of preparation uh, despite his protestations that you can just throw away the script i do believe in a lot of preparation so that you can do fewer takes i'm not a fan mm -hmm. of a lot of takes mm -hmm. so we would do two takes, two takes and try and nail it in those two takes wow if we did a third mm -hmm. it was usually just so we could play Mm -hmm. to get something unexpected, something, else. something not scripted. From um, your, your movie, Unlucky Plaza, what was the one thing that you wanted the televiewers to get out of? What was the one thing you wanted to un us to understand? Uh, unlucky choices? Uh, would, would you do an Onassis in, if you had the chance? Um, what, the, the, what we wanted to, to get out of this film that's that's a question, right? I guess it's really just um, it's a story about um, 
cultural differences in how um, we did the film, there were a lot of cultural differences as well. Yeah. I mean, it's a so hostage US, drama. So. It's a hostage comedy, if you will, where a foreigner takes a bunch of local Singaporeans, Singaporeans. hostage. So the potential not only for individual conflict, but sort of wider mm -hmm. ramifications like cultural, cultural, cultural yeah, yeah. and xenophobia yeah. uh, to come to rise and bubble out of society was there. So I think we tried to play the film on two levels. One was that individual mm. crazy knife wielding madness, which and is it, very fun it, to watch. Yeah, and, and it had to be epi. It had to be epi. It had to be a Filipino. Yeah, I mean, could, I mean, could could, cast couldn't, yeah, else, couldn't yeah. you have casted somebody else? I was going to say, couldn't be from another nationality or... Yeah, could be you. <laughs> What do I tell them now? You paid me? I mean, whoa. Were you worried about the xenophobia and yes, the reactions that... of like both both sides? Both sides. When when we showed in Lucky Plaza in Singapore, there was this big issue about um, racial slurs. Mm -hmm. About this Filipino telling locals versus yeah. locals yeah. versus, so versus Pinoy. Yeah. Pinoy. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, there's this Filipino nurse who said, you know, stink, you know mm. calling Singaporeans Singaporeans, mm. while the, the the Singaporean people were like protesting so that we don't we don't have our um, independent Independence Day celebrated in Singapore. So there was this race uh, cultural tension between the two. Oh. Mind you, all of this happened shortly after we finished filming. Mm -hmm. oh. So we hadn't was, even shown it yet. Yeah, we hadn't even shown it yet. We. We made this film where, the, because of the hostage taking, there are these protests. The locals in Singapore protesting about Filipinos in mm -hmm. Singapore and all that xenophobia coming out. And of course, when the film actually finished, m a few months later, to my horror, there was a real protest. Where so you had foresight. <laughs> you, 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 you had insider it. trading here. Maybe I should, I maybe I should, maybe I should make a movie about filmmakers who uh, yeah, who we'll actually succeed. <laughs> well, basically, we will, if there was one thing that I would you know want to learn out of this film is you know, just, or to 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 fix um, with this film is you know bridging. Cultural gaps. Yeah, I mean yeah. the world is so small these days. Yeah. I mean you you can't have. That I hate much to cut the discussion, but now let's see what our viewers have to say. First, we have Riva, and the question is for Ken. It has always been my dream to be a film director. What advice can you give me, and how can I start achieving my dream? Okay. Well, you know, I like I said, I'm an accidental filmmaker. I didn't grow up thinking that I wanted to be a film director. So take this advice, if you will, with a pinch of salt. Um, follow your heart. Follow your heart. And don't anyone let, let you know, tell you what, mm -hmm. what not to do. That's mm -hmm. all there is to it. Yeah. yeah. Next, we have Lester. The question is for Epi. Does it bother you that you're always playing the bad guy? Oh, no, no, no. Really. no. <laughs> I love playing the bad guy. You know, I, I, um, I love playing different kinds of roles. I, 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 I love to play. But, but in, this, in this movie, it's not really a bad guy. He but it was not. a good yeah, guy to that had in. to make choices yeah. to, to, for the family. Right? Exactly. So maybe that's what a lot of bad guys might do or, or mm. have been doing. Yeah. Or well, pushed, I've, pushed I've, to do. I've done a lot of roles. You know, I've played the bad guy. I've played uh, the bad woman. <laughs> <laughs> so I played, you know, I... I just love, you know, playing roles that I am not. And when you come to think of it, Onassis is practically the most normal. Normal from all the roles that you've acted. All the roles I've done. Yeah. Yeah. But you should see why probably I I got recognized is because it's really a the film, the character was written to showcase the emotion. Does, I mean, does the know. does the end justify the mean? I think it's complicated. I think it's complicated. Of course, Are there... uh, one has to condemn violence. One has to condemn criminality. But if you are to ask me personally, as Ken, yes, you Ken. Know, would you do what? Would you do? I think I might. Mm. If I was pushed that if far, I think I might. Far. And I think whether it's with uh, the character of Onassis or any number mm -hmm. of the other greedy 
you know, mm-hmm. avaricious yeah. and prejudiced that's characters right. in the film. Like, is there a part of me that's also, you know, can can empathize with that? I have to say yes. I can't just talk down to these characters. So, so the bad yeah. guy in the film is actually the the good guy, the, the most honest, Maybe. The most honest of, of all yeah. the characters. And last, we have uh, Mika, and she asks, "How do you handle criticism?" Uh, well, I you've mean, you've had your share. Yeah, I think you have. It's hard, and I will admit that I have had. You know, when I was a little younger, it always got you down a bit and made you angry, but. You have to sort of learn to shrug it off and get on with the job. And I think if you keep your eye on the work, then it's it's easy, mm-hmm. really. Yeah. I don't read about it. Yeah. I don't really. I mean, it's the, if you criticize me the way you want. I mean, I'm the, I'm still my biggest critic. I know what I where I failed. But I will never tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, thank, thank you guys. You, so you know, much. unfortunately, that's it for real talk. But we enjoyed having you. And uh, for all those uh, viewers out there, you know, Ken was a former swimmer, so <laughs> that's a little bit of trivia. I just found that out <laughs> just today on the show. Well, thank you. It's thank you. Very yeah, well, much. Please do. I'm inviting everyone to please do come and watch Unlucky Plaza. It's uh, 4:20, April 20, um, out in uh, cinema cinemas nationwide. We got. Um, a P, P, uh, a R16 rating, so... Oh yeah, okay. no censorship yeah. in the Philippines. <laughs> hey, only here. It's more fun in the Philippines. Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you for being with us. Um, and uh, we hope to watch the show once again, April 20th. I'm catching it as soon as I can. And thank you to our viewers for joining the discussion. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we have. Have a great day, everyone.